my name is Lede, and this is my channel, Lede's Corner. On this channel, I talk a lot about food allergy mom hacks, as well as I do mom vlogs. If you are not subscribed to this channel, I would like to ask that you consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top 10 questions that I like to ask daycare providers before choosing a new daycare. Because your girl has been burned, burned by daycares before in the past and so I've just learned to ask a lot of questions to protect myself, to protect this money, and to protect my child, and just to really protect my time and energy. So, so let's go ahead and get started with number one. Is this a nut free facility? You have got to ask this question if your child has a very severe peanut allergy like my son has. My child is so allergic to peanuts that he cannot eat peas. He cannot eat green bees. Did you realize they were all in the same family? I didn't. I didn't realize that until I experienced it with my own child. In addition, I, I haven't eaten a peanut in like four years because I learned very quickly when other people around him eat it, it's the protein still is able to impact him and cause him to have allergic reaction. It is an absolute non-negotiable for my child to be in a facility that is nut and peanut free. Number two, I'm very interested in the student to teacher ratio. I know in every state, it's gonna be a little bit different. But what I like to see is, is this daycare just meeting the standard? Or are you trying to go a little bit above and beyond? Um, in my opinion, I really like to see at least two teachers in the classroom, no matter what the ratio is. I just feel like when you have one adult who's responsible for handling everything in the classroom, it really creates a lot of potential for there to be some supervision slip-ups, which I cannot afford when I have a child in your care who has severe, potentially life-threatening, food allergies. Number three, I wanna know about your lunchtime routine. There are some routines that I prefer over others. The routine that I prefer the most is when everybody is sitting at the table, family style, including the teacher. And I also like for my child to be sitting right next to the teacher. And so what this arrangement allows for is number one, my child doesn't have to be excluded. He doesn't have to sit at a whole different table. He can sit with everybody else. And then I know that there's gonna be an adult right there watching him and making sure that he's not grabbing other people's lunches as opposed to having a situation where the kids are eating and the teacher's over here filling out paperwork, putting together cots and beds, putting sheets on the cots, pulling out teddy bears and doing all this stuff where your children are essentially unsupervised. And so um, I have actually been in daycare situations where that has been the case and that's just not okay with me. Number four, I wanna know about your medication policy. More specifically, your as needed medication policy. I found in my experience as a food allergy mom, is sometimes before my kid has like a full blown allergic reaction, there are times where maybe we have like warning signs, we have hives that pop up, or maybe he's just not feeling well, or just some little minor symptoms that if we quickly nip it in the bud with Benadryl, that is the end of the story. Well, there are some daycares, I've learned the hard way, that have a, I mean, they just don't give medication as needed. Uh, the particular daycare that I went to, they only gave medication at two particular times, and your child had to be signed up on a list to get that medication every day. There are some things in life that you just can't really put on a schedule, which is what they demanded for ease and convenience. And so I would definitely check with them about that. I would even throw some scenarios, like what if this happened? Like how would you respond to that? Just to kind of really get an idea of kind of the culture around medicine and what their expectations are. Number five, can I bring food from home? My child has so many allergies, y'all. And it's, it's very hard to accommodate uh, a child who has as many allergies as my son. And uh, I just prefer to pack things from home because I can control it. I know exactly what's in it. And I feel a lot 98% you know, very confident in it that he's not gonna have a reaction to it. In addition, that's what his doctors prefer. I actually had a daycare that like challenged me on that. Like, we don't care what your doctor's nurse says. You will be provided all of his meals. We will be provided all of his snacks. I ended up choosing not to send him to that school because of their rigid policy on not bringing outside food even with a doctor's note. To go along with that, I like to ask if my child's food can be heated. That sounds like a dumb question, but take note, a lot of elementary schools do not allow the use of microwaves at school. Number two, some people aren't that bright. <laughs> I actually have my child in a daycare and I was sending some of his favorite things to school and he wasn't eating them. They were just like, oh, he doesn't like it, he doesn't want it. 
And then, upon further investigation, I found that they just weren't heating his food. I'm like, if an adult wouldn't want to eat cold leftovers, what makes you think my child wants that? And so I was like, can we start heating up his food? I don't know, I, I can't, is that a possibility? And so it turned out that they did have a microwave and then they did start heating his food. And uh, once that started happening, eating was no longer a problem for him. Number seven, I wanna know about the types of activities that you guys do with the children. More specifically, what type of food related activities y'all got going on? In the neighborhood where I live, a lot of the schools are pretty progressive. They don't do a lot of like food based arts and crafts and activities like that, which as a food allergy mom, I really appreciate. You'll find some schools that like literally three to four times a week, they have some type of food activity going on. I feel like the number of food activities that a daycare center has kind of correlates some information to me. Number one, it kind of gives me an idea of how many times my child will be left out of an activity because he is allergic to the food that they are working with. Number two, it communicates to me like, how much work I'm gonna have to put into providing accommodations if that's even possible um, so that my child can feel included. I don't wanna have to be rushing to the store two to three times a week just trying to gather up material so that my child can participate in this arts and crafts activity. Number eight, I'd always like to know the communication systems they have in place. More specifically, if, um, if for some reason my child's regular teacher wasn't here, whether she resigned or there was a substitute, how do you make sure that the new teacher gets the information that she needs? A lot of daycares will have your child's picture with the food allergy information. A lot of daycares will work with the kitchen staff who will inform the teacher. Um, and so I just don't like to hear like one person being like, because I'm like, what if you're not here that day? What if you're so overwhelmed and busy with other tasks, you don't get to it? So I just like to hear that there's a lot of systems in place that will uh, increase the chances of the new teacher getting the information that she needs as quickly as possible. Number nine. I wanna know, do you guys have experience with other children who have food allergies? The reason I wanna know this is because like, I don't want my child to be the experiment child. I don't want my child to be how you figure out what your policies are because you mess up and you make mistakes with him and then you're like, oh, okay, from now on we're gonna do it this way. No, to me, I just really like to hear. Oh, we do have other children with food allergies and this is how we And so that's really important to me. Number 10, I like to try to have some conversation about the EpiPen because over time you just realize not everybody really thinks about the EpiPen the same way that you do. I feel like I wanna deliver the EpiPen as quickly as I can. I refer to my um, action sheet that my doctor provided and as soon as I see one or two symptoms on that list, stab, we go into the hospital booth. I continuously hear that the earlier you deliver it, the better chance of survival that your loved one has. I always like to try to conversate, you know, who's gonna be delivering EpiPen? Okay, and kind of like, what are your thoughts? Have you had to deliver the EpiPen before? What was your experience with that? When do you think it's appropriate to deliver EpiPen? There are a lot of people out there who honestly believe that your kid needs to be unconscious before you should deliver the EpiPen. And I'm like, nah, nah. Don't wait till my kid is unconscious, so. <laughs> but there's a lot of people out there. I had this conversation with a daycare leadership person and that was kind of her philosophy. And I actually had a situation with my own child and you know the daycare called me and based off the information that they told me, I was like, okay, it sounds like you guys need to give the EpiPen. Um, you know, you told me that he was having some complications breathing, he was complaining that his throat was hurting and he has some very severe swelling, facial swelling. Like, it sounds like you need to give him the EpiPen and get him to the emergency room. You know, I'm about an hour away, I'm gonna get there as quickly as I can. And they totally did not read his action plan. They totally disregarded the information that I shared with them. And they were like, but he's not passed out yet. We can't give him the EpiPen, he's still conscious. That's clearly not a part of his action plan and that totally does not align with my values and beliefs about EpiPen. A lot of daycare providers, they are not medically trained. They don't have a nurse on staff. So you definitely wanna have that conversation. You definitely wanna get a feel for that. I know this video is gonna be lengthy. Yeah, it's gonna be a lengthy one, but I just feel like this is so important. It is so important, and I wish that a video like this would have been made when I started my journey as a food allergy mom, because this type of information would have saved me a lot of headache and a lot of drama. So hopefully I've been able to do that for somebody today. Uh, if you thought this video was helpful, 
I don't know, you know, maybe give me a like or something. But that's the only way I know what type of content is helpful. What type of content? Eh, not so much. If you think that I'm forgetting something or if there's questions that are essential for you, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in next week's video.